So welcome to unit nine, developmental psychology, and we are on module 49, gender development. Um, and if you're just joining this channel, these um, recordings within the AP psychology playlist, follow along with Myers AP psychology, um, <laughs> Myers psychology for the AP course, third edition. It's a little early here in California today. Um, anyway, let's get started. This isn't a really long module, but um, hopefully we can be done in about 15 minutes. We'll see. Oh. Okay, there are four learning targets. Um, really interesting, interesting topic. Uh, for a lot of people. We're going to be discussing how the meaning of gender differs from the meaning of sex, um, looking at some ways in which males and females tend to be alike and tend to differ, um, identifying the factors that contribute to some biases in the workplace, and explaining how gender roles and gender identity differ. So what is the difference between sex and gender? Often we hear the term sex and gender used interchangeably, but really they have a little bit of a different definition in terms of psych the, the psychological definitions um, and biological definitions. So sex is the biologically influenced characteristics by which people define male and female. So um, for instance, different genitals, different levels and types of hormones dictate sex. Now gender is the socially influenced characteristics by which people define boy, girl, man, and women. For instance, you know, um, time spent doing homework, sports play, the toys chosen, um, those are more indicative of the term gender. So how are men and women alike? In many ways, of course, whether male or female, each of us receives 23 chromosomes for our mother and 23 chromosomes for our father. Of those 46 chromosomes, 45 are unisex, the same for males and females. So that's, that's a big overlap of similarity. Our similar biology helped our evolutionary ancestors face similar adaptive challenges. Both men and women need to survive, reproduce, avoid predators, all those things that have kept us safe over um, long periods of time in our evolutionary hist history. And so today we are in most ways alike. Um, are we more similar? Well, identify yourself as male or female and you give no clues to your vocabulary, happiness, or ability to see, learn, and remember. Males and females on average have comparable creativity and intelligence and feel the same emotions and longings. Um, our opposite sex is in reality our pretty similar sex. So, but what are some differences? The average girl enters puberty about a year earlier than the average boy. And a young woman, a woman, a young woman, a woman's lifespan is um, on average five years longer. Uh, women express more emotion. And this is all stuff that's, that comes from research and it follows along within the textbook. Um, uh, women are more likely to express emotions more freely, smiling, crying <laughs> thing if you're on social media, uh, things like Facebook updates. More often women will uh, use expressions like love and being so excited. Um, women are able to detect fainter odors, um, and, but there's also some other uh, issues that come with uh, some, you know, being more in touch with emotions. Or women are two times at the, two times the risk of developing depression and anxiety, and ten times the risk of developing an eating disorder. The average man, though, is four times more likely to die by suicide or to develop an alcohol use disorder. Um, he is more likely to, to um, be included in a list of individuals that have autism spectrum disorder, color deficient disorder, and ADHD, attention hyperactivity disorder. As an adult, males are more likely to be at risk for antisocial personality disorder. How about in terms of self-esteem? Well, these are two normal distributions that differ by very little. If you can see the female curve by the male curve. Such comparisons illustrate differences between the average male and female. The variation among individual females or among individual males greatly exceeds the difference. Um, how about aggression though? So this is some research on the differences between male and female levels of aggression. Men generally admit to more aggression, especially extreme physical violence. Um, worldwide, men do commit more violent crimes. 
And in terms of other things, men often take the lead in hunting, fighting, warring, and supporting war efforts. And this is all supported by those research articles right there. Now, relational aggression. Women are slightly more likely than men to commit acts of relational aggression. Um, so this is a very sad example. And you may have heard about some of these examples in the news uh, about a student who committed suicide after suffering constant re relational aggression um, by bullies. So what's the difference between what we think of as sort of regular aggression and relational aggression? So aggression is any physical or verbal behavior intended to harm someone physically or emotion emotionally. Uh, and that does seem to occur more often in males. Relational aggression, which seems to occur slightly more often in females, is an act of aggression, physical or verbal, intended to harm a person's relationship or social standing. Now, how do girls tend to socially connect? So females tend to be more interdependent. Again, you know, you may be a, a female sitting here thinking, I'm not like this, right? These are, these are on average, like so many things we've talked about um, within this course, these are on average and you you it specifically may not fit the mold of what's being talked about, but these are um, looking at big groups of people. In childhood, girls usually play in small groups, often with one friend. Now, how about boys? As children, males typically form large play groups that brim with activity and competition with little intimate discussion. How do some women's relationships vary from some men's? Well, bonds and feelings of support are stronger among women than men, according to research. Women's ties as mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, and grandmothers are what often binds families together. Um, as friends, women usually talk more often and more openly. Uh, how about in coping with stress? Compared with men, women are more likely to turn to others for support. They are said to, and I've heard this term many times, tend and befriend. A role is a set, <laughs> not like a bread roll, a role, R-O-L-E, is a set of expectations or norms about a social position, defining how those in the position ought to behave. So it's sort of like, if you have a particular role, this is what it's thought of, about how you ought to behave. So what's the difference between gender roles and gender identity? So gender roles are a set of expected behaviors, attitudes, and traits for males or females. Gender identity is our sense of being male, female, some combination of the two, or neither, which is thought of as gender neutral. Much of what we believe about gender roles is changing. There's been huge changes in gender roles. At the beginning of the 20th century, only one country in the world, New Zealand, granted women the right to vote. And by 2015, all countries have granted that right. A century ago, if a woman worked for pay, she would more likely have been a midwife or a seamstress, seamstress rather than a surgeon or a college professor. And we all know that has changed drastically, at least within the United States. Now more US women than men graduate from college and nearly half the workforce is female. So social learning theory is the theory that we learn. We learned about this, remember, um, a little bit, <laughs> that we learn social gender behavior by observing and imitating and by being rewarded or punished. Think back to that learning, there's learning modules, Alba Bandura a little bit, reward and punishment, BF Skinner. Um, gender typing is the acquisition of a traditional masculine or feminine role. Do parents matter in the development of gender roles? Parents do help to transmit their culture's views on genders. In, on gender, in one analysis of 43 studies, parents with traditional gender views were more likely to have gender type children who shared their culture's expectations about how males and females should act. Um, some other research shows when fathers share equally in housework, their daughters develop higher aspirations for work outside the home. Um, rather than conform to restrictive gender roles and norms, some people prefer to embrace more androgynous roles, a blend of female, traditionally female and male roles. And there does seem to be benefits to having more of this androgynous attitude towards gender roles. As adults, androgynous people are, seem to be more adaptable, more flexible um, in their career choices. There's some research supporting that. They tend to be more resilient and self-accepting and they often experience less depression. So what are some examples of androgynous behavior? 
Um, so boys and girls both feel comfortable dressing and nurturing a doll, building and destroying a block tower, throwing and catching a football, and designing and coloring a, coloring a picture. Fathers cooking meals, mothers, stepmothers changing oil, um, you know, people doing a mix of different roles that aren't so gender stereotyped would be people that are um, exhibiting more androgynous roles. Um, types of clothes and everything like that can also be something you can consider. How do children decipher gender roles without even being taught? Once children grasp that two sorts of people exist and that they are one of these two sorts, they search for clues about gender. In every culture, people communicate their gender in many ways. Their gender expression drops hints not only in their language, oh, men are handsome, women are beautiful, but also in their clothing or interests, you know, like um, I see my dad who golfs, or I see my mom who bakes, those kind of things help form um, concepts about gender when children are growing up. So children are kind of like little gender detectives. Having picked up such clues, three-year-olds may divide the human world in half. They will see um, they will then like their own kind better and seek out them for play. Oftentimes when kids are younger, it'll um, maybe only want to play with the same gender child. Girls, they may decide are the ones who like my little pony and have long hair and boys might be, they think watch transformers and don't wear dresses. So armed with their new collective proof, they adjust their behavior to fit their concept. And these stereotypes about gender, seem to be really, really rigid for a lot of children, not all, at about ages five or six. If a new neighbor moves in as a, and as a girl, a six-year-old boy might think, I can't, I can't like the same thing as a girl, that kind of thing. For young children, gender often looms large, not always though. Now, transgender is an umbrella term describing people whose gender identity or expression differs from that associated with their birth designated sex. Even as five to 12 year olds, transgender children typically view themselves in terms of their expressed gender rather than their birth designated sex. So note that gender identity is distinct from sexual orientation, the direction of one's sexual attraction. Transgender people may be sexually attracted to people of other genders, the same or both or not at all. So we are to our learning target reviews. Um, Really understanding the differences between what the definition of gender versus sex is important for this module. Gender refers to the socially and culturally constructed, constructed expectations about what it means to be a boy, girl, man, or woman, whereas sex refers to our biological status as male or female, defined by our chromosomes and anatomy. We might say that our body defines our sex while our mind defines our gender. So, Men and women have lots of similarities and some differences, right? Thanks to our similar genetic makeup, we make up, we see, learn, and remember similarly with comparable creativity, intelligence, and emotions. There are some differences, but they're very comparable. Um, males and females do differ in height, age of onset of puberty, life expectancy, and vulnerability to certain disorders. Men admit to more aggression than women, and they are more likely to be physically aggressive women's aggression is more likely to be relational. Women focus more on social connectedness. They are more interdependent and they tend, they tend to tend and befriend. Okay. Um, we didn't cover this that much in this module, but this is a good overview right here. Differences in male, female perception, compensation, and family responsibilities both influence and reflect gender bias. In most societies, men have more social power and their leadership style tends to be directive, whereas women's tend to be more democratic. Although that's cheap. Those, those things, again, these are on average and, in, and not the same in every country. In their everyday behaviors and interactions, men tend to act more assertive and opinionated. And women tend to act more supportive and apologetic. Gender roles, the behaviors a culture expects from its men and women vary across place and time. Social learning theory proposes that we learn gender identity, our personal sense of being male, female, or some combination as we learn other things through reinforcement, punishment, and observation. Um, critics argue that cognition also plays a role as gender typing varies between children. We seem to conform in ways that feel comfortable to us, whether that means taking on a male, female, or a blend of the two type of roles, which we call androgyny. Transgender people's gender identity differs from 
the behaviors or traits considered, considered typical for their biological sex. Their sexual orientation um, is something different though. It could be heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, or asexual. And we have made it to the end of that module. It wasn't too long. Thanks for listening. Take care.